It is often said that diamonds are forever. That's probably because diamonds seem to be virtually indestructible. However, in this video, I will attempt to demonstrate that it's quite simple to convert diamonds to carbon dioxide gas. Maybe diamonds aren't forever after all. Diamonds are made entirely of carbon atoms, which are represented by the black spheres that you see in this animation of the chemical structure of diamond. It should be possible to react the carbon atoms in diamond with oxygen gas to form carbon dioxide gas. The chemical equation that represents this process can be seen below. Let's test to see if diamonds can be burned in the oxygen and air with some inexpensive diamonds I bought from Aper Diamond Company. These diamonds are inexpensive because they have imperfections in color, quality, cut, or things like that. I purchased the diamonds you see in this bag for $50. All right, let's open up the bag and choose one of the diamonds for our experiments. I think I'm gonna pick this one right here. Wow, it actually looks quite beautiful. All right, let's find out how much the diamond weighs. Place it on the scale, and looks like it's about 0 .0146 grams. That's about 14.6 milligrams. Now we're gonna heat the diamond in this crucible using a blowtorch. When doing so, the carbon in the diamond should react with oxygen in the air to form carbon dioxide gas. It looks like the diamond glows orange hot as the reaction happens. Because the carbon is getting converted to carbon dioxide, which will escape into the atmosphere, the diamond should be losing carbon atoms and therefore losing mass as the reaction continues. Altogether, I spent about 10 minutes heating the diamond. Now that the diamond and crucible have cooled, we'll weigh the diamond to find out how much was converted to carbon dioxide. Remember, the diamond started at 14.6 milligrams, and it looks like it's lost some mass. We're below 14 milligrams. Looks like about 13.9 milligrams. So 7 tenths of a milligram of the diamond has been converted to carbon dioxide. I'm gonna try burning the diamond again, but this time I'm gonna use map gas instead of propane. I'm also gonna place the diamond on this screen to allow for a better flow of oxygen to the diamond as it burns. The screen should allow oxygen to get to the diamond better as it burns, which should allow the diamond to get converted to carbon dioxide easier. The map torch burns at a higher temperature and this should also allow for a greater conversion to carbon dioxide. Altogether, I spent about five minutes heating the diamond on the screen with the MAP torch. Once again, we'll weigh the diamond to find out how much was converted to carbon dioxide. Remember at the start, the diamond had a mass of 14.6 milligrams. Holy cow, that's a lot of mass lost. We're down to 10.3 milligrams. That's a total of 4.3 milligrams lost, or almost 30% of the mass of the diamond from the beginning. I wanna try one more thing. The diamond should burn better in pure oxygen than in just air. You see that test tube over there on the right? That test tube contains liquid oxygen, which of course is pure oxygen. I'm gonna heat the diamond to a very high temperature using the MAP torch and then I'm gonna drop it into the liquid oxygen. Let's see what happens when we do this.
Wow, that was really cool. The diamond reacted with the liquid oxygen and it was completely converted into carbon dioxide. It even gave off energy as the reaction went on and that energy sustained the reaction, keeping it going and allowing the diamond to completely burn away. In fact, when I poured out the liquid oxygen from the test tube, the diamond was nowhere to be found. It was completely converted to carbon dioxide. Well, it looks as though diamonds don't last forever. Apparently they can be converted to carbon dioxide gas. Fortunately though, this only happens at very high temperatures. So as long as you don't plan on heating your diamond with a blowtorch, you can expect it to last for a very, very long time.